Hi, welcome to the channel Coders Arc, where we unravel the world of coding and architecture together. And today, I'm going to show you how to create an AI model using Amazon SageMaker. Now, I have seen a lot of YouTube videos which show you how to create an AI model using Amazon SageMaker, but those videos are mostly from the perspective of AI architects or data scientists, and they use the Jupyter Notebooks to run the Amazon SageMaker. Now, Jupyter Notebooks are good when you're running the experiments in an isolated environment, but this video is tailored for application architects, enterprise architects, and developers who want to understand the end-to-end -end flow of running an AI model using Amazon SageMaker. I have used the React application as the front end. I have used the Lambda function to orchestrate the various SageMaker training, processing, and deployment jobs. And finally, I will use the Amazon SageMaker to do the heavy lifting of training the model. Once the model is deployed to an inference endpoint, I will use the same React application to make a backend call on an API gateway and fetch the predicted response. Now, feel free to pause the video and take screenshots of the architecture diagrams and the code snippets that I will be sharing throughout the video so that you clearly understand the key concepts. Also, this is not the most perfect architecture. My goal is to make sure that you understand the end-to-end -end flow and not necessarily create the most perfect architecture. To create a more perfect solution, I encourage you to explore the ECS Fargate or the EKS pods to run the orchestration jobs in case the data sets are very large or the model takes too long to perform its um, computations. Also, another thing is that I'm using the simple XGBoost model that is available from the SageMaker library. But again, I encourage you to explore the various other SageMaker Foundation models or SageMaker models that are available in the SageMaker registry. So with that said, let's dive right into it. Let's take a closer look at this architecture diagram. On the left side, you see a front-end web application, which is coded using Vue, Angular, or React TypeScript. In my demo, I'm using React. Then you use the React TypeScript to invoke the Amazon API gateway which in turn invokes an AWS Lambda to fetch the pre-signed URL for the bucket on which we will upload the training dataset. Then we upload the training dataset using the pre-signed URL, which in turn triggers the orchestration Lambda using the S3 event notification, which kicks off the orchestration steps. The first step of this orchestration is splitting of the data using the Amazon SageMaker processing job which in turn uses the Python processing script, which uses the scikit, li scikit library to do the training test and validation dataset splits. The next step of the orchestration is creation of the model using the Amazon SageMaker training job, which in turn creates the model archive on an output model bucket. For the demo, we are using the XGBoost model, but you can use any model that is available from the SageMaker library. Then the next step of the orchestration is deploying of the model on an inference endpoint. This is necessary so that other web services or web applications can get the predicted response using an HTTP endpoint. So finally, once the model is live and available as a model deployed on inference endpoint, we need to invoke that model to get the predicted response. So you can see the bottom half of this diagram use the front-end web application to make a request to the inference endpoint and then get the predicted response, which we will show on the UI. So let's look at these steps in more details using code snippets, AWS console, and further architecture diagrams. So the first thing that we want to take a look at is the data set, the input data set. As you can see, it should be in the CSV format and it should contain some meaningful information around the features and the target variables. So in my data set, I have age, weight, gender, and dosage of various patients. And then the final column, fatal, is the target variable. So using a combination of age, weight, gender, and dosage, I want to predict whether a drug is fatal or not fatal. And to get that prediction, I need to create a model by using this data set as the training data set. Now, 
let's take a look at the React application front end UI. Essentially, I have two sections. One is the training section and the other is the testing section. In the training section, I will just upload a CSV dataset, uploading the same CSV dataset that I showed previously. And finally, that should trigger the training in the back end. And then I will use this form to submit some sample data and then get the predicted response in this text box. So let's see how this works. There is one minor thing that I want to show on this React application sample code is that we upload the training data set using the pre-signed URL. I've already created a video for how to generate a pre-signed URL using Amazon S3 and you can watch that video to understand that in more detail. But using that pre-signed URL, you upload the file using the API Gateway and Amazon Lambda and behind the scenes, this is going to trigger the next steps of the workflow, which is the training of the data set. So let's take a look at the code behind the scenes. We are now at the AWS console and you're taking a look at the Lambda function, the orchestration Lambda function. As you can see, it has a trigger for an S3 event notification. And if you look closely at this trigger, it has a prefix of the exact folder location where the training data set is going to be uploaded. So what that means is whenever a training data set is uploaded on this location inside the S3 bucket, this particular orchestration Lambda is going to get kicked off. Now, before I kick off the AWS Lambda, which will trigger the orchestration of the SageMaker flow, let's take a closer look at the bucket. The bucket has the following folders. There is a Lambda layer folders, which you don't have to really worry about because it contains the packages that are needed to run the various jobs. It's just Python packages that are placed inside this folder. Uh, I've already covered Lambda layers in a previous video, but the important folders to notice here is the first folder is the training folder. So if you look at the training folder right now, it's empty. This is the folder where we will upload the training data set. And if you remember, this is what will trigger the orchestration Lambda. Right now it is empty. Then we also have a folder called SageMaker processing scripts. This is where the script is placed, which will do the splitting of the training data set into the training test and validation data sets using the scikit-learn library. And then if you look at it, there is another folder called as output folder and this folder is empty. Essentially, this is where the model artifacts are going to go. So let's get ready to run this Lambda function and see what happens next. Actually, I want to show the Lambda function code before I run the Lambda orchestration. So let's take a closer look at this. This is the Lambda handler method, which is the entry point for the Lambda function. Here, I'm defining the SageMaker client object, which is essentially going to make the AWS SDK calls into the SageMaker. And then I'm defining a bunch of URLs that are going to be needed at various steps of the orchestration. And finally, if you come down over here, the first step is that the SageMaker client object is used to go invoke the create processing job method from the AWS SDK. And here are some of the parameters needed. You supply the input data set, which is nothing but your training data set. You supply the code location. This is the code location of the Python script that will split your training data set into training, test, and validation data sets. Then you also specify the output location where that split will go. So basically three different CSV files, the test, training, and validation data set CSV files are going to be stored in this location. And then finally, you also have an image URI. I will explain this concept in just a second. And the role on. Let's take a look at the processing script that is needed. So this is the processing script and it defines the scikit-learn model selection package. And from there, we import the train test split module. Here, we take the data set that is available from the original training data set and convert it into the pandas data frame. And finally use the train test split method and a test size of 0.2 to get the training and test split and do the same for the training and validation split. Finally, we also want to make sure that the gender, which was initially a 
English text like a male or a female for a model to work we want to convert it into a label encoded numeric value so zero or one depending on the uh, whether it's a male or a female and once we get all of the data set into the numeric form we want to split the data set and save it into the respective directories so for example we have the train csv test csv and the validation csv they will go into the output directories um, another important concept I want to illustrate is the this batch file that I've created. It's used to deploy the process training and the Lambda function into the Amazon ECR. Let me first talk about why the Lambda function needs to be deployed as a container. And that's because we are running this Lambda function using some Python packages and they increase the size of the Lambda function. So if you remember the default size or the maximum size that you can get for a lambda with lambda layers is only 250 megabytes so that's why we are packaging it as a container and we need to deploy the container image onto the ecr so that's this portion of the script then you have the process and training portion of the script where essentially you are taking the the python code that i just showed for the processing job you package it as a image and deploy it on the ecr and essentially our lambda is going to whenever our lambda invokes the create processing job method for if you remember the SageMaker processing job is created it uses the the this container that holds the processing job code and we'll do the same for training data set so now coming back to the lambda function code as you can see we created the processing job and we are going to wait for the processing job to complete before we get to the next steps of the flow. The second step of the flow after the processing is complete and the trained test and validation data splits are available is training the model. So to accomplish that we first create an XGBoost estimator object and here are some of the parameters needed for that. We pick the XGBoost latest image from the ECR we specify a role on we specify the output location for the model archives we specify the instance count and the instance type just because we are running a very basic test i'm using an M m4x large and i will terminate it after using this and you specify some more parameters like the training data set location and the training job name finally you use the create training job method from the AWS SDK and pass the XGBoost estimator object that we just defined and that will complete the training job. And then before we move on to the next step of the flow, we have to wait till the SageMaker training job is complete. So once the training job is complete, we need to move on to the next step of the orchestration, which is the deploying of the model to an endpoint. But before we can do that, we have to define the model object. As you can see, the image URI for that is the XGBoost latest. We have to define a role on. We have to define the SageMaker session that we used. And then finally, I'm doing some print statements just so I can view the model. And then we use the models deploy function from the SDK and specify the parameters for initial instance count, instance type, and endpoint name and that's how we deploy the model so now i'm back on the ui and let's see all of this in action here i'm going to choose my file and i'm going to choose the training data set so now i will select my training data set from my local folder and this should trigger the upload of the csv data set on the training folder let's validate that as you can see on the AWS console, the file is now uploaded using the pre-signed URL to the training folder. When the file got uploaded on the S3 bucket, it triggered the Lambda function and you can see in the CloudWatch logs, that the Lambda function was triggered and now it is doing the processing job. So the processing job is triggered. So let's validate that by going into SageMaker. Okay, so now I have navigated to the Amazon SageMaker and if you see on the left side, there is a section for processing. I go over there and click the processing jobs and on the right side, 
it loads a list of all the processing jobs that have run previously. So let's take a look at the last executed job. When I click on it and I scroll further down, you can see that there is a clickable link for viewing the logs. I click that and it takes me to the CloudWatch logs for the execution of the processing script. So let's look at the logs. And here you can see that the data set was split successfully. We can validate that by going into the S3 bucket and seeing that there should be three data sets, one for the test data set, training data set, and the validation data set. Okay, so now we are at the S3 bucket that contains the test, train, and validation data sets. And I've already clicked and validated that they contain the appropriate number of rows. Okay, so now I am back on the SageMaker. And if you look on the left side, there is a section for training. And I click on the training jobs. And I see that there was an execution of a training job right after the processing job had completed and split the data set into test, training, and validation data sets. If you remember the Lambda function code, we were going to wait for processing job to finish and then launch the training job. And that's the training job I'm going to look at. So I click on it. And then if I scroll down, I can see that there should be some logs. I click on those logs. And let's see if the execution was successful. So there is a bunch of logs. They So essentially XGBoost algorithm uses the random forest approach so it's just printing out how many trees were created in each iteration so you don't really have to know a lot of technical details around the depth of the tree or the number of nodes but essentially all you need to know is that the training was successful so this is some of the data that is generated from training of the model so we can validate that the model was successfully created by looking at the model archive in the output bucket. So let's go to the S3 bucket again. So now I navigated back to the S3 folder and here you can see that there is an output folder. Inside the output folder, there is a folder for the training job archive. And if you navigate into it, you will see the model.tar.gz file. This is how SageMaker generates a model archive. Now I'm not going into the details of what this zip file contains but it contains a lot of useful information about the model details and maybe i'll make another video and show that using this jupyter notebooks on how you can parse this model file and show the contents of the model but for now all you need to know is that the model was successfully created when you ran the training job so now i want to validate whether the model that we just created is deployed on the inference endpoint or not. So let's go to Amazon SageMaker, click inference, click endpoints, and here you can see that the model is created. So let me go inside the model. And here you can see some details around that. And finally, you can see there is an HTTPS endpoint. This is the endpoint that I will plug into my backend code. So essentially, if you remember the architecture diagram, we had the front end application calling an API gateway and the API gateway is indeed calling the inference endpoint. So I need to plug this URL in the backend application code. Let me show you that. We are now looking at the backend application code that will use the AWS SDK to make an invocation of the inference endpoint that we just looked at. So here you can see that I'm defining the content type as text slash CSV and I'm passing a payload. Essentially that this payload contains the information about the age, weight, gender and dosage, which are the feature attributes. And using them, we are going to determine the target attribute, which is whether the drug is fatal or not. So then we use the endpoint name and we get the response over here by invoking the endpoint and finally we pass that response back to the front-end application so now let's take a look at the front-end application this is the original form that we had uploaded the training data set on now once the training data set is uploaded and the model is created and deployed 
we are going to use the test section of this form to fill in some data. And when we hit the submit button, it's going to make an invocation on the SageMaker endpoint and going to give us the probability of the drug dosage being fatal. So let's click and see what happens. And there is about 56% chance of this combination leading to a drug being fatal. Similarly, you can change the values. So let's say I change it to 200 and make it male. Dosage I increase to 200. Change the age to 40. Hit submit. So yeah, these numbers will change depending on the feature attributes. So obviously this is just an illustration. You can plug in with more realistic data and get an end-to-end -end flow. Okay, let's quickly recap what we have learned in this video. I have shown you how you can use Amazon SageMaker to create an AI model. I have also shown you how you can use a Lambda function to orchestrate the various steps that are involved in creating the model, training the model, and deploying the model to an inference endpoint. I have also shown you that once a model is deployed on an endpoint, how you can use a React application to make a call on the Amazon API gateway, which in turn invokes a Lambda function, which in turn invokes the inference endpoint to get the predicted response. Now, I have done my best to show you through the examples, code snippets, as well as the architecture diagrams, the flow of this architecture. But it does not compare to you trying to run these examples and running the code yourself so that you can understand the depth of each step involved. With that said, I hope you found the value in this content useful. And if you did, please hit the subscribe and like button. And also let me know in the comment section what other videos you would like to see next. For now, goodbye.